Plus Sports Special on a Saturday as usual. My name is Wally Scott. Welcome on the show. And I've got Mokael as usual with me. He's a Chelsea fan, so I don't like him very much. Really. I don't know why. <laughs> as usual, comes in with such aggression, so much violence on a Saturday. Okay. It's violence. It's violence. <laughs> okay. Now, in the spirit of Children's Day, mm. in the spirit of um, our children, I, I put a prayer on WhatsApp on my phone, and I put it there that um, when our children start reaping everything they deserve in life, may we, may our seats not be empty. Amen. You know, it, it, it's a fantastic prayer, really. Amen. And then everybody prays to reap the fruits of their labor. So happy Children's Day to everyone out there. Um, yes, it was yesterday, but it's never related to mm. which children Happy Children's Day, really. I have a, a youngster. I, I don't want to call him a child on the show today. I have a youngster on the show today via Zoom who is going to be joining us. His name is Elvis Osimi. And we're going to ask him just basic questions about um, the EPL. He's only the EPL he knows about, you know. But in the spirit of Children's Day, we'll let him Let's get a, say his opinion, a, you know. So, Elvis, welcome on the show. Yes. Okay, yes. good. Okay. Yes. I, I'm I'm going to ask you a question. Chelsea won the Champions League a few seasons ago. Oh, last, season. last season. Now they are not doing well. They are third in the English Premier League. What do you think the reason Chelsea is third this season? Why? Why do you think so? Uh, okay. I think um, we have problems with um, the network. Mm -hmm. So we'll just go straight to um, other things. Now, Aruna Kadri will face defending champion Hamid Salah of Egypt in the semi-finals of the ongoing 2022 IWTF Africa Cup Table Tennis Championship at the Mola de Okoya Thomas Hall testing Balogun Stadium. Now, this is my grouse with this particular game. Aruna Kadri has consistently had problems beating Saleh. Saleh is the defending champion, no doubt, you know, and um, he's had problems beating him. But he's going to meet him in a bit, in about a few hours. And I don't know if Aaron Kodri, considering his age, though, can make it happen today, this afternoon. Um, you know, in sports, there's always just that one opponent that tests all of your abilities. He brings out the best in you and uh, challenges all of your technical prowess in any sport, especially individual ones. So no matter how good every opponent, every player gets in whatever sport they're playing, there's just, remember the time that Federer couldn't beat Nadal? Yeah. Back-to-back -back meetings just kept ending in a Nadal win. And a lot of people attributed it to Federer being older, Nadal being younger, the young coming for the old, uh, Nadal's game relying more on power and having that shock and awe factor that Federer's technique just could not counter. Eventually, the, the meetings balanced out and Federer got more games won under his belt against Nadal. And now both of them are... I would say evenly matched on a good day. Even on a bad day, it's hard for Nadal to get an outright victory against Federer. Uh, I just think there is a day coming, and it, that day might be very well today because there's something called... Um, Are you being patriotic or you're being honest? No, I'm, I'm being honest because Providence seems to do this thing. You've only, only been a Nigerian analyst. But every He's time... He's never found an answer to this guy. Every time we talk about one opponent... Not uh, one player never having won against this opponent. That's when they win. Every time we talk about them um, a failing against a roadblock, that's when they overcome it. And this might be the day that that roadblock falls for Arena. Okay. Now, before I, 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 I after this, we're going to have to go back to um, a show we had a few weeks ago. Mm. Now um, we had two fans from London on this show mm. and then they were talking extensively about their one is a massive Liverpool fan Daily Shady Glover the other one is a massive Real Madrid fan Hala Madrid Ladi Egbediri 
And they spoke extensively, and they actually bantered they were almost on each other's necks on who will win tonight's match. Mm. But before we go to that program, Liverpool fans were, were are still in good spirits in Paris as they geared up for the Champions League final against Real Madrid, standing outside a Liverpool-themed bar known as the Cup Bar. The supporters sang their hearts out as they enjoyed their time in the French capital. Let's watch this first, and then we'll come back and discuss first, and then we'll go to the program that we did last time. British fans, mm -hmm. Mukhail, you should know better than I do. <laughs> British fans, they are high, they are noisy, and everywhere they go, they show themselves. They are in Paris right now, and look at what they are doing. Mm -hmm. It's like they are in their town. <laughs> Honestly, um... I mean, they have every right to live this uh, vicariously through their football teams because, I mean, the game is theirs. They, make, they created it. I mean, if you ask uh, some other people, uh, they would say the Chinese created the game. But we, the football has become synonymous with the English, with the British. And well, some would say the Brazilians started playing football with tins of milk and they are um, one of the best in the world right Well, now. I mean... At this point in our uh, in football's history, the question of who is the best is up for interpretation. Once upon a time, it was the Brazilians. Uh, their individual flair was the definition of what we considered what great football could be. Uh, but the Spaniards came out and showed that football, they made us remember that football is a team sport and the way they played it, moved the ball around, making sure that we understood that technique mattered, uh, the technique of passing the ball around, of, of creating opportunities, of opening up spaces in opposition defenses was just as important as individual ability to dribble. Um, the English have come a long way in that short in such a short period because they have some of the most technical players their football team has ever had coming to that i like that before we go to the show now um on the show that we're going to be playing right now mm -hmm. we have um two major fans mm -hmm. one liverpool one real madrid both in london mm -hmm. and um after the show mo salah spoke extensively about we can't forget in a hurry what happened in 2018 when um, Mo Salah was the problem the Real Madrid defense had and mm. Sergio Ramos quickly took him out and his shoulder just shifted and he had to be taken out but he said today I'm going to be more careful mm. I'm going to take my time I'm not going to let that kind of thing happen to me I'm going to play the game till the end and preferably score a goal yeah. these guys have the three most plunged attack in the world, if you ask me, Firmino, Sadio Mane, and Mo Salah. And then on the bench, they've got Jota. Mm. I don't think you can even refer to it as a three-pronged attack anymore because right now, if um, Liverpool wanted to play and with the kind of football that they play, they could, they could play all five attackers with uh, Jota and uh, uh, Diaz. Coming off the bench, and Diaz playing That's a problem. all five players at the same time could be reasonably achievable. With Firmino probably dropping deeper into midfield because he has abilities to stand as a linchpin. But Firmino is glass; he gets injured like yesterday. Yeah, but you know, there's advantages to glass. You know, uh, you throw something at glass; if it's hard enough, it can break. But if you position it right, it can slide right off. And that's what Firmino can offer you. Let's um, watch. Um, this program was, um, was um, done like about three weeks ago. Mm. But I mean, it's still very, very, very relevant mm. because the match actually comes up tonight. tonight yeah. So we'll watch the program and we'll come back shortly. Stay with us. And of course, we're anticipating the much-awaited UEFA Champions League Finals. Of course, that's between Liverpool and Real Madrid. I've got two friends and colleagues from London. They are both from London via Zoom. One is a staunch Liverpool fan, Dele Oshodi Glover. The other one is a staunch Real Madrid fan, Hala Madrid. His name is Ladi Egbedire. Guys, welcome on the show. Well, Hello, Wally. Hello, Hello <laughs> Nice to be on the show once again. I'll start with you, Ladi. 
Real Madrid are believed to be a Champions League team. When it gets to this level, they always go all the way. What's your take on this one? Well, I think it has to do with the, with the mindsets, with the personality of the players, of the team itself, its legendary status, and the fact that uh, the guys, don't, they don't just give up. Even when the chips are down, you still see them believing in themselves, believing that they can get the job done. And uh, the last time Real Madrid, don't forget, got to the final and lost was against uh, this same team that they are going up against on the 28th of, uh, Mark of May. That's Liverpool. And that was way back 1980-81 season. But uh, I don't see that happening again, even though Liverpool, for me, they are the favourites to win this championship because they have a very cracked team. They have a lot of impactful players in that mix. They have Musala, there is Luz Diaz, there is Cadio Mane, Firmino, and De Bujota. But then, like I told some couple of friends before the game against Manchester City, don't you ever write Madrid off, man. If you do that, you do that at your own peril. Um, Dele, let me come to you on this one. The biggest assassins in the attack in Europe as we speak, Liverpool have those guys, Sadio Mane, Firmino, and Mo Salah. Can they take it up against Real Madrid? Um, Wally, like I said earlier, I'm glad to be on the team once again, and I'm glad to have Ladi on the opposing side. Um, <laughs> I stand to be corrected. Um, when it comes to the UEFA Champions League, Real Madrid is a household name. Um, the UEFA Champions League is, is like their birthright. Um, but you can't take away the pedigree of Liverpool as well. Um, you talked about the strike force of Liverpool. It goes beyond the strike force of Liverpool. It's the whole team. The pressing game has really helped Liverpool over the years. The club has given Liverpool an identity. Um, you mentioned Firmino, Jota, Salah, Mane. You forgot to insert in those deals that Ladi mentioned earlier. Luis Diaz, for me, is the most impactful footballer in the English Premier League between January and now. You can't take away from him. The semi-final clash, which Liverpool won, was thanks to Luis Diaz's impact. Uh, for prosperity's sake, for the beauty of football, um, Liverpool and Madrid is the best finals we could ask for. It can go either way, but as a Liverpool supporter, definitely I want Liverpool to win. And don't forget, most of these players have the revenge mission in their head. Musala is saying what happened in 2018, he has to avenge that. They won't go unpunished. Um, thank God Sergio Ramos isn't there anymore. So, hey, maybe Liverpool stands a very good chance against Madrid right now. I think Madrid is a little bit depleted. But like Lado said, write off Madrid, write them off at your own peril. Lado, um, let's, let's look at it from this perspective. Now, people have started to call Carlo Ancelotti Carlo Christ Ancelotti. He can bring you back from the dead. And he has brought Karim Benzema back from the dead. Karim Benzema was, has never been dead before, Wally. That's a, let me, a, a, a point of correction to that. Karim has never been dead. Karim has just been a player that likes to make his teammates look good. During the era of uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, Gary Bill, when he was still very much active, Karim was playing for the team. He was his interplay the way he links up with the rest of the, of the guys, and was just making the rest of the players look good. Now, after Ronaldo left, he realized that he has to step up his game. He has to become the leader. And he has totally become that. And even before he came to Real Madrid, when he was still Olympic Lyon, he was playing amazing football. He was scoring beautiful goals. So, for the fact that he allowed Ronaldo to try, and he was played second fiddle to Ronaldo, doesn't mean he was dead. He has never been dead. So, uh, for me, if there is any player that will say that, okay, probably Ancelotti has fine-tuned his game to a certain extent, that should be Vinicius Jr. Don't forget, when Zidane was in charge, Vinic Vinicius was not as clinical as he is right now. But after the coming of Ancelotti, he made Vinicius understand that, look, when you get into the 18-year box, two, three touch touches, then you decide when you will put the ball. You don't dilly dally on the ball for too long. Five touches, six touches in the box, no way. Which means you've already lost concentration. Two, three touches, then you're done. And you saw that in the play of Vinicius. You saw that fantastic goal he scored against Manchester City. Nobody saw that coming. You know, five, six touches into the 18-yard box. And he made up his mind even before he got to Elderson. So, for me, if there's anybody that uh, Ancelotti has really revived his game, that's really fine-tuned his game, that should be Vinicius Jr. and probably Camavinga. That's one impactful young guy. Since he came from Rennes, he has been doing very well for Real Madrid. Now, Dele, there's something that I have a problem with. And I think that's what Lado 
is holding on to in his pocket somewhere. That's what every Real Madrid fan is holding on to. We watched all the games in the Champions League. Nobody has an answer to Vinicius Jr. and Benzema. You can't find an answer to them. Can Virgil van Dijk hold on to Benzema in that finals? Um, they say every day for the thief, one day for the owner. Um, these guys can have an off day on that day. Football can go either way. It's 11 against 11. And they have a Vinicius Jr. We have a Mohamed Salah. They have a Karim Benzema. We have a Seido Mane. You know, player for player, like for like, but you can't take away Benzema's pedigree, just like Lado rightfully said earlier. Karim Benzema has evolved over the years. Karim Benzema was never dead. It takes a man to own up and say that a certain player is better than him. That's what he said about Cristiano Ronaldo when he said Cristiano Ronaldo overshadowed him. He said, no, Cristiano Ronaldo didn't overshadow me. Cristiano Ronaldo is a better player. He's the best player in the world. So, hey, it is what it is. Well, like I said, like for like, um, I think Liverpool can actually match Real Madrid. And I'll keep my fingers crossed. I'm not bragging today, um, but I hope we win so that I can pick up my phone and call Lado and say, Lado, I told you. Wally, uh, <laughs> I don't know why you are playing this on the down low. Because if you look at the bookmaker's side, uh, what's it called, predictions, up to this moment, Liverpool are the most, the most favoured side to win that championship. Nobody gave Real Madrid a chance against PSG, against Chelsea, against Man City. Now, Liverpool. And if you look at the form of Liverpool in the league, they've been doing very well. I think they've won 42 matches on beating right now, and that's a fantastic record for them. So they are playing fantastic football. And Luis Diaz, like you rightly said, a very important player since he came in from in January. And don't forget, you guys still have, you still have Origi. That is another guy that makes so much difference coming in from the bench. So that Liverpool side, for me, they are losing with a lot of fantastic players. They got so much confidence going for them, and their pressing game is, 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 is just amazing. But against a Real Madrid side, for me, I would say some of the players right now, they are playing twilight football. We're talking about a player like uh, uh, what, Tony Cruz, Luka Modric, even though he's still churning out all those great passes. But his game has gone down a bit compared with some of the youngsters you guys have in the middle of the park. But experience will always come into play and the self-belief and the personality of each team will also come to bear. I like the fact that both of you are being modest today. Both of you are saying you are staying on the fence. But um, let's leave the players alone. Let's leave the match alone. Let's go to the coaches. Delia, no, let me come to Ladi. Ladi, Jürgen Klopp is a Diemann shaft. He's a German machine. And he's strict with his game. What do you think he will have opposing to Carlo Ancelotti on that day, on the 28th? Well, well, we know that Jürgen Klopp is one guy that is always animated on the sideline while well, 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 Cancelotti is always very cool and calm. Even when his team is leading by four goes to nil, he's still calm. Now but Jürgen Klopp is always animated on the sideline. He's always gesticulating, making love a, a scene and the rest. But you see, it's all about the... We all know the style of uh, Jürgen Klopp. He likes to press high up the field. That's the way the team are wired and that's the way they play. And, but I, I still feel that there will be some bit of space in the back where uh, Ancelotti will tell his boys to take advantage of. And we have a, if you have a player like the kind of pace of uh, Vinicius, and don't forget Rodrigo, that young man, nobody gave him a chance, but he's been scoring important goals for Real Madrid. So for me, that's another player that can also make a big mark on that game. And like I said earlier, Ancelotti always cool and calm. He can't read his emotions. He's always cold, like an Italian mafia that he is. But I, I still feel that... Uh, the pendulum will swing in the favor of Real Madrid. I'm sticking out my neck this time. Now, Dele, Dele, uh, Lado has answered both questions for me already. But let me ask you my question. Now, Klopp is a Diemann shaft. He's a German machine. He plays, like Lado said, he plays up front. But Carlo Ancelotti is an Italian. He's like the mafia. He's calling. He'll come at you. He'll come behind you. He'll come from backyard. He'll come from front yard. He'll come at you anyhow he comes. He wants to win. How he wins, he doesn't care. Um, Wale, um, for me, a coach who doesn't have a plan B, plan C, plan D shouldn't be called a coach. Um, um, let me make reference to a certain Pat Guardiola. Pat Guardiola had just one plan in his semifinals. It didn't work out. Over the years, um, Guardiola has lost at a certain stage because of game management. When it comes to game management, you mentioned people like Jurgen Klopp, people like Carlo Ancelotti, they know what to do 
when the time arises. Um, let's go back to the semi-final match, Liverpool semi-final match. Half-time, Liverpool was down 2-0. Um, I don't know. Um, it was 2-0 initially in favour of Villarreal, and then Liverpool came back. And um, and um, it takes a whole lot for a coach to make a sacrifice. It takes a whole lot for you to take risks. It takes a whole lot to, for you to read the game and actually apply it the way you want it to be applied. Um, Jurgen Klopp studies. He goes beyond saying, okay, this is a better player than this player. No. Um, everybody thought Henderson was going to start the game against Villarreal, but no, he didn't start. He started a certain cater. And then Keita, for me, if I had my way, I'd have taken Keita off at halftime. But I guess the coach saw something that we didn't see. And it worked for him at the end of the day. So game management is going to come into play, if you ask me on that day. Whoever manages the game better will carry the day. Um, I'm going to sit on the fence once again. Like I said, it can go either way. Lado rightfully said that Liverpool might be the favourites for this tournament. But hey, you can't take away the pedigree of Real Madrid. They know what to do at the 13th minute. They know what to do at the 63rd minute. No bookmaker would have predicted that Real Madrid will come back from the dead against Man City. In case you don't know, in case viewers don't know, spectators left the stadium as at the 80th minute. And when they realized that he had gotten to the ex gotten into extra time, they wanted to come back to the stadium. No, 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 no. They didn't let them back in. That's game management. And luck was also on their side. So luck comes into play. Personnel comes into play. Risk comes into play. A whole lot will come into play on that day. But like I said, it's a revenge mission for Liverpool. So for people like me, I'm just looking forward to the ninth yet we need to hear that Liverpool has won. That's it. Deji, Deji, I might, I might still disagree with you again concerning what you said about luck. You see, luck can only come, come into play when you are putting a certain amount of hard work. Yes. You must put in a certain amount of hard work. You must believe in what you are doing before luck comes into play. Now, if you look at the intensity of that game towards the end, as soon as, what's it called, uh, uh, Ancelotti realized that he was losing the game in the middle of the park, he pulled out Tony Cruz. He pulled out Luka Modric. He pulled out Casimiro. He brought in the youngsters. And they started bombarding Man City's box from that very moment going, even though they had no shot at goal until the 89th minute. There was no shot at goal from Real Madrid. But as soon as they brought in all those youngsters, Rodrigo and the rest of them, you saw that the intensity changed. That's the game management, brother. Yeah, 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 yeah no doubt. No doubt. But when you said luck, it's all about luck might come into play, but luck is just probably 10 or 15% of what we're talking about here. It's more about hard, hard work and, you know, the kind of pressure you put into it, that's what really works for you. Not Lado, really work, please don't take me out of, out of context. When I said luck, I said luck, because, luck is part of football. You know what? Let's because, not argue. Let's because, not argue because, because a lot of people, a lot of people talk about, on television. When, when, when they, they, a lot of people talk about Real Madrid, you know, being lucky against PSG, being lucky against Man City, against Chelsea. Now they were lucky against Man City again. Hey, when is that luck going to stop? Against okay, guys, you, guys, you, you guys must understand that it's against all about hard work. It's all about hard work. It's all about self belief. It's all about hard work and self belief. Okay, guys, before I let you guys go, I'll break you guys off, of course. Um, let me put you guys on the burner. Ladi, let me start with you quickly before I let you go. Would you predict a scoreline at the end of the day? Well, that might be difficult to do for me, Wally, but I still feel that we're going to see goals in that game. Both teams will come off firing on the cylinder to score goals. Don't forget, uh, Moussala is uh, venteful right now. He wants to come back and get his pound of flesh back. But like I told somebody yesterday, his pound of flesh is going and get from a uh, what's it called, Sergio Ramos, who's already who's in, in PSG, which went in Paris already. So I don't, for me, revenge is out of the game. It's all about who really wants to win it on the night. But I'm going to see a lot of goals. The number of goals I'm going to see, I can't say. So I'm going to stick out my neck about the number of goals that will be scored. Okay, um, Dele, uh, before I let you go too, um, we'll, let me put you on the burner. Who would you give, what, what would be a scoreline at the end of the day for you? 3-1 in favor of Liverpool. 3-1 in but favor of... Okay. <laughs> Ladi Agbedire, staunch Real Madrid fan, and Dele Oshodi Glover, staunch Liverpool fan. Thank you all very much for joining me on the show today, all the way from London. Thank you very much. You're welcome, yeah, Ladi. Now, I had Ladi Agbedire and Dele Oshodi Glover, but of course, Dele spoke about uh, Mo Salah being optimistic about the game against Real Madrid. Let's listen to him. We'll come back. Stay with us. Somebody said something, and then you mentioned it this morning too. And they are saying that um, George Ware was the luckiest footballer in the world 
for winning the World Footballer of the Year, mm. that they are never going to give it to an African player again. Mm. I want to disagree with that, really. But everybody is talking about Mo Salah. Everybody is talking about Sadio Mane. Everybody is saying they are both African players and they will not give it to them. I don't know who they are, but they say they will not give it to them, you know? I mean, let's, let's think about this reasonably. Even when we talk about some of the very best African players in the game, even when the likes of... Uh, uh, Edward M uh, Mendy when he did so well in the Africa Cup of Nations uh, won the competition and I think he even won the Golden Glove his name did not make it at the end of the day when we were talking about best players best keepers in Europe Donnarumma <laughs> got <laughs> I just want to point out that the, the African trophy is not considered even on the same level as the, the, South, Europa, as yeah. the South American Confederation. Concacaf, yeah. So, and we know how sometimes when the argument is being made, oh, um, uh, the player who won the Concacaf whether they are, whether they've, like the argument over whether Messi deserved to win the Ballon d'Or the sure. last time, the fact that uh, um, uh, Jorginho won the Euros, won the Champions League, um, did that give him more leverage? Even if he had only won the Euros, it gave him more leverage amongst people, True that. sports writers, and uh, everyday football lovers. However, because Messi is Messi, his legend is... Ronaldo is Ronaldo. And Ronaldo is Ronaldo. <laughs> yeah. And Jorginho is Jorginho. It was enough that Messi won a trophy. That's why they gave it to him. But if it had been any other player, if it had been Aguero when he was still playing, who the consideration was being given to as, being, as having had a better season than Lionel Messi, as being in consideration for the top... Um, prize, the top individual prize, going up against Jorginho, who had just won the Euros, I bet you Jorginho would have won. Okay. Um, it's unfortunate that um, the Africans are disadvantaged mm. when it comes to getting this award. It's so unfortunate, really. And there's still a good chance that even if Liverpool win this, even if Liverpool win this, because the goalpost of determining this individual award, this particular individual award, has shifted back and forth over years. Once upon a time, it was all about individual brilliance. You did well individually, you got to win it. If you True. were the best individual in the sport for the year, you got to win it. Then it became about trophies, especially with Ronaldo and Messi. They were better than everybody else in the, on the but playing field. But they were field. not winning trophies. So if you had to d d choose between them, the only thing left to choose between them was how many trophies this one won and the quality, the coefficient value of the trophy won. Now, every other player is judged by that. But I bet you, when it was necessary... But do you think that if Liverpool do win tonight, mm. do you think... Sadio Mane or Mo Salah will have a chance to win this, the Ballon d'Or. They will have a chance. I just don't know. If but will they, they win? I don't know if they will give it to them. Because another thing you need to remember is politics is such a big part of this. True that. A lot of players want to go play for Barcelona, want to go play for Real Madrid, because these are traditional powerhouses. It's like the U.S. at the U.N. They are Security Council members. True that. So when a player is having that kind of uh, a political infrastructure behind them to campaign for them, they usually go and do well. Neymar has never been happy at PSG because he doesn't feel that PSG have been able to do for him what he always wanted them to do, which was the reason why he left Barcelona, which was to stand out as a champion in his own right and win the uh, greatest uh, individual uh, t trophy the Ballon d'Or, to cement his legacy as being on the level of Messi, on the level of Cristiano Ronaldo. Still talking about disadvantages. Talking about, I, I don't think this should be a disadvantage. I think this is um, 
an insultive story, if you ask my opinion. And I'll tell you why later. Now, Salama Mirado Jasmine is the first female coach daring club Viruga has ever had. She's also the first woman to be training a men's soccer team in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Soccer has always been a part of Jasmine's life. Her father was a referee, and all five of her brothers played the sport. She played two until she decided to train and qualify as a professional coach. Okay, welcome back. Um, the reason why I use the word disadvantage initially, before I go to my story, next story quickly, mm. um, is that, um, why is this a story? Because she's a woman? No, it's a story because it's an anomaly. It's, let's not... That's my point. Yeah, but let's not forget that, or, or let's ignore the um, liberal notion that she's breaking boundaries and breaking glass ceilings because otherwise people were trying to keep her from getting that job. The truth is, these jobs have only recently been interesting to uh, a, certain, female sector. a certain population of the female uh, agenda. So ultimately, um, it's a story because it would, have, it would be a story if it, if it was a 16-year-old that was a coach, because we don't get a lot of 16-year-old coaches. Sure uh, it, would be, it would be a story if, uh, a blind, if it was a blind manager. The anomaly, the, the novelty of it is what makes it a story. Okay, now, um, before I go to the story, smoking. Mm. Somebody has to stop him. Mm. Carlos Alcaraz is 19. Mm. He just won an event and is into the last 16. No. In the French Open, the Roland Garage. Who does that at 19? A Spaniard does that. A, a Spaniard, Spaniard who okay. grew okay. up okay. on clay. He was on clay? Yes. Carlos Alcaraz, meteoric rise, continued yesterday when the Spanish prodigy produced yet another awe-inspiring performance to outplay American Sebastian Corda, 6-4, 6-4, 6-2, and reached the last 16 of the French Open for the first time. Remember his name. Carlos Alcaraz. You be, have to remember his name. He's 19. He might be the next great Spaniard in the game. No doubt. And um, I see this person needs to watch his back. Yes. He might be the, th uh, he might be the heir to Nadal's throne. I'll leave you everyone with Ferrari's Charles Leclerc, who set the pace of the practice for his home Monaco Grand Prix on Friday. I'll leave you with that. Thank you very much, Isaac. I call him Zico. He's behind the cameras. You can't see him. But he makes you see us. Thank you very much, Mukayo. Thank you very much, Elvis Osimi. He was supposed to be our child guest on the show today for the Children's Day, but 
for some net reasons, the network just didn't work. Thank you very much, Elvis Osimi, for joining us today on the show. Thank you very much, Shei. Troublemaker. But thank you very much, Shei, all, all the same. Thank you very much, Ajasa AJ. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Pierrot, from downstairs in the powerhouse. He always makes it happen. Thank you very much. Join us same time next week in Plus Sports Special. My name is Wally Scott. Like I always advise you at the end of every show, if not for anything, at least for your heart, do some sports.